Oh wow, such pretty eyes. Look at how lustrous they are, how intense their design. The shades of blue against a pale background, mesmerizing. If you are into pretty eyes, then you have found exactly the right video. Because I'm going to teach you about this moth species and how to raise it in five steps. It is easy. Step one, the eggs of this moth species. The first life stage is eggs. You're going to need two things, a paintbrush and a petri dish. The eggs of this moth are very easily incubated on room temperature, around 21 degrees Celsius, but they can deal with much colder or warmer temperatures too. It is a tolerant species in general. Two weeks later, it will look like this. Small caterpillars will be coming out of the eggs. They are hungry and they need food as soon as possible. So what do we do next? Step two, small larvae, AKA baby caterpillars. Isn't it nice to have normal and non-dramatic transitions? That's right. First, line a container with paper towels. Make sure to add a generous layer. This will absorb excess moisture and make it easy to clean. And on top add some leaves. You can use oak tree, willow, cherry, beech, or birch tree. Next, use the paintbrush to transfer the baby caterpillars onto your leaves. You might be tempted to use your hands or fingers, but this is not recommended. The babies are super small and easily crushed by accident if you use your fingers. Secondly, human fingers have bacteria on them that make them sensitive. Next, use the paintbrush to transfer the baby caterpillars onto your leaves. You might be tempted to use your hands, but this is not recommended. The babies are super small and easily crushed by accident if you use your fingers. Better use a paintbrush instead. Secondly, human fingers have bacteria on them that may make the sensitive little babies sick. Who knows where those fingers might have been? Yep, that's not suitable for all ages, or caterpillars for that matter. Be gentle with them and be nice until they grow bigger and stronger. They are the most vulnerable right now. What's really cool about this species is that the babies have little horns. It's really awesome and it makes this species very attractive to breed. It's very adorable. Such ornamental little creatures. They remind me of stags with their little antlers. Or perhaps little Christmas trees with candy canes. I love it. Just keep them in a plastic box. Over time they will eat and grow happily at their own place. Space, sorry. This is the second life stage. This is what it looks like after they're shedding their skin if you took care of them well. Similar but larger, and the horns look somewhat different. Caterpillars of this species are solitary, but you can keep them clean and then you can raise them in somewhat higher densities. At this point they become bigger. This is your cue that it's time for the next step. Step 3. The mature caterpillars. This is the third life stage. It's very different, is it not? If your caterpillar looks like this, this is your cue to move them to bigger containers ASAP. Find a big plastic box. You might want to fill the bottom of the container with paper towels again. Yes. For this hobby, you need a lot of paper towel. It absorbs moisture. It keeps the box easy to clean when the caterpillars poop and it even gives the caterpillars a place to pupate safely if they need to. You can just fill a can or a bottle with water. And once it is full you can place some host plant in the water. It will keep fresh like flowers in a vase. Then just place the host plant in the container and the larvae can feed on it. 
Let me show you how I introduced him. <clears throat> it's time to see how ugly Atau is doing. Because today I'm moving them to a bigger enclosure. You see, it's much, 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 much bigger. Hold on. So first I'm gonna do the classic paper toweling that I always do. Place it here on the bottom of this uh, silly container here. There you go. It's gonna absorb, absorb all the excess moisture. Keep it nice. Next, I have a lot of, well, again, this is a mix of willow and oak tree, which is what I prefer to use. Place it here in the back. It works. Like our ugly Atau is just doing great. Let's do a little checkup. Yeah, most of them are first or second in star. Let's take a look at this, yeah? Ooh. So this is great. This is uh, fantastic. Can you see that? What do you guys think? Leave a comment if you like the caterpillars. Or do you think they are scary? No, they're not scary. That's, that's nonsense. They're just really cute looking. I hope the wind doesn't blow the leaves away. Oh, there's some strong wind. It's very easy to raise them on oak tree, willow, beach. So there's a lot of plants they can eat in the wild and in captivity. Awesome. This is really looking really good. Wow. Who would have known? The Tao Emperor Moth on my YouTube channel. Another life cycle. They're so cool, aren't they? Anyway, I'm gonna put them back in their container. Uh, I think I can use the same setup for Instar 3 and maybe 4. Once they hit Instar 5, maybe I will move them to a bigger container. But for now it's fine. I have an excessive amount of space in my opinion for being this small. So let me just place them back here in their enclosure. It's, um, yeah, so cool, so awesome. You gotta love them, don't you? I do, I love them, I love this species. They are just awesome, in my opinion. There you go. Enjoy guys, enjoy the fresh leaf. In a few days I wanna check back just to remove the, um, the dry leaves. Because the leaves they are sitting on right now, those are gonna dry out because I, I, I plucked them off the branch. Of course, this, this gap here is actually an advantage because it's ventilation, it allows the humidity to escape. And the towel prevents the caterpillars from escaping, so maybe accidentally I found out a setup that works really well, by accident. Over time, the caterpillars lose their spines. This is what they look like right now. at that here they are there's nothing I love to see more than healthy fully grown caterpillars guys these are the fruits of my labor my hard work it's paying off once again Once fully grown, they will look like this. Fat, colorful. And that's how you know they are ready to pupate. Get ready for that. After a while, you'll find a lot of pupa. If you have followed my instructions correctly, that is. And with a little bit of good luck, since breeding is a combination of luck and skill, to be honest. The bad news is that these moths have just one brood per year. You're not gonna enjoy your moths until the pupa have hibernated first. They need to hibernate, it's mandatory for this species. And for that you just store them cold for several months. Step four, the pupa. In order to hibernate the pupa, you can fill a box with warm and isolating materials. You can use cotton wool, 
vermiculite, graphite, coconut fiber, or just about anything that protects the pupa from direct cold exposure. In nature, the caterpillars burrow underground and pupate there, usually in a thick layer of leaf litter. Next, you need to expose them to the elements, place them outside in your garden and leave them alone until next spring. A lot of moths have an obligate hibernation. This means the pupa have to be exposed to cold temperatures for several months before the moths even begin to develop. This can be a very boring time for moth breeders. This hobby is very seasonal in a way. Not a lot of people realize how much time I spent making these videos. In this case, it took me a whole year. Look, spring is here. Ladies and gentlemen, spring is coming. As you may see, we see the first flowers. It's a bit of evidence that things are going to start blooming. Because like most of my species are literally sleeping in winter, they are hibernating, waiting for me to warm them up after a few months. And it's gonna happen now. It's another breeding season, it's another year. So with that, this is the first species of the year I'm taking out of hibernation. And to be honest, I'm a little bit bored. I just came back from the country of Uganda, where I've been studying moths. All right, here's the moment of truth. My army of beautiful ugly Atau, I love you. Where shall we place them? Some of them even move, can you see? They're starting to move already. I think I will place them in here. This tub contains vermiculite and the vermiculite keeps them humid. It absorbs moisture very well. My little babies. And now we're going to wait for maybe two weeks until we hopefully start seeing the first moths come out. Take them indoors. After the pupa are warmed up, you can expect the moths in a month or so. Ladies and gentlemen, I just noticed that when I take a look at my beautiful pupa, in the corner of my cage there is a mysterious little moth. You're probably just as curious about it as I am. Let's take it outdoors to make a nice close-up. Step 5. The moths themselves. Alright, the Tau Emperor moth. The male and female are very easy to tell apart, for one simple fact. Males are more bright orange and are a bit smaller. Females are much bigger and their color is more pale. This species is found in Europe, but also parts of temperate Asia and Russia, usually in beech forest or riparian areas. Their flight time can be quite short, about three to five weeks in spring in one short brood. They're also lovely and very cute. With their bright blue eye spots, the moths are day flying. They need a little bit of sunlight to mate. It works outdoors in your own garden in a net cage for insects. Online you can buy good quality moth cages for insects and butterflies and moths. Agliata will easily mate in these kind of cages. Very easy. Most important thing is you need sunlight. It's a day flying species. Let me show you. See if anything will still happen, folks. Are the males gonna notice her or is she done mating for today? We shall see. We shall see. My little Tau Emperors. Oh, 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 what's this? One of the males is trying. Oh, yeah. 
Look at the difference here between the male and the female. Oh, come on. This male is definitely trying. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got it on camera. Oh, we got it on camera. They are mating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm cheering on moths when they are mating. Isn't that crazy? Yes! They did it again! Ooh. Yes, this is the sexy time. Oh, gosh. They did it. We freaking did it! Right in front of our nose. Uh, yeah, this species will mate during the day. It's interesting how many European silk moths are kind of day flying. Congratulations. This is what a mating looks like. This male and female are making love. That's right. Soon the females will lay dozens of fertile brown little eggs. For this you have to do nothing. They will lay them automatically, anywhere. Collect them and put them in a petri dish. And in about two weeks, the eggs of these moths will once again hatch on room temperature. Life cycle completed in five steps. The eggs can be preserved and incubated in a petri dish. Here's your babies folks, we did it again. Another life cycle in five steps. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, especially if you are into moths as much as I am. I am one of the biggest moth breeders on the internet. And on YouTube, I have literally filmed hundreds of moth life cycles. If you are as crazy and obsessed with moths as I am, this is the channel for you. Thank you for watching. Have you ever seen ugly atau in the wild? Or have you ever raised them in captivity? Or maybe you're planning to do so? If so, please leave a comment.